My brief was to give a brief history of the School of Biblical Studies and to help me to be brief, I'm going to read what I want to say because that will stop me from saying too much. This 2018 course is the, the last and brings to a close a, a lengthy history of the provision of theological education and training by EMF. The school has been shaped and refined over the years, but the intention always the same, to prepare men and women for useful and we pray fruitful gospel service. The mission has been based at Gesson since 1981 and a course run in most, though not all, of those 37 years. More than 300 students have lived and studied at Gesson's during those years, but as we're going to be hearing, that's not the whole story of EMF's involvement in providing such training. The move to Gesson's enabled a school to continue that had begun in 1964 at EMF's previous headquarters in Watford. The first student that year was Evangelos Celis from Greece. It seems particularly appropriate that we've had Greek students here this year after a very, very long gap studying again on the EMF school. Evangelos Celis went on to become a missionary supported by EMF to work in his home country where he faithfully served for more than four decades before finally retiring. And Evangelos, as many of you know, went to be with the Lord uh, last year. And many more people, men and women, have followed in the years since he came here. Receiving training at the School of Evangelism, as it's been known, or the School of Biblical Studies, as it's latterly been known, before going on into Christian ministry. But even the Watford course had its roots in a more distant past. The desire to train people for gospel work in their home countries can be traced back to the very early days of mission to Europe that would become EMF. As many of you know, the Glasgow-born evangelist James Stewart first set foot in Latvia in the winter of 1934. And the Lord was pleased to bless his ministry there remarkably during the 1930s and then throughout many parts of uh, Europe. James Stewart himself received no formal Bible training. He was a clearly gifted man, gifted by God for this evangelistic ministry, and somebody thoroughly equipped for uh, the work that he was doing by learning in the school of life. But James Stewart was nevertheless committed to the notion of formal training as a precursor to sending foreign missionaries into Europe and for preparing native Europeans to engage in mission in their own countries. That focus on Europeans working in their own countries increasingly became the hallmark of the organisation that since the late 1950s has been known as the European Missionary Fellowship. That desire to train and equip missionaries was already working out even in the 1930s. Memorably and movingly, in May 1939, just a few short months before the outbreak of the Second World War, a Bible course, as they called it, was held in Poland, organised by James Stewart and his wife and others working with them. About 50 preachers, some travelling hundreds of miles, attended that course, a course that had taken a year to plan. They studied the books of Acts and Romans, systematic theology, church history and evangelism. It was a curriculum that I think students today would recognise many of the parts. They had time for Christian fellowship, for ministry, for prayer and also some relaxation. And students today would recognise those things. In Poland... Remember May 1939, as in many other places in Europe, local people were being prepared and trained to continue mission that just in a few short months would be continuing during the years of the Second World War. When people were able to go back into eastern and 
Central Europe after the war, they found that that mission had been continuing even through the war years. James Stewart's wife, Ruth, wrote of the 1939 Bible course. On the closing day, we could not keep back the tears from our eyes as our brethren, one by one, expressed in touching language just what the Bible course had meant to them. How many of us over the years since have heard students speaking of the EMF school in those sorts of terms? Ruth Stewart wrote, the whole cost of the course was £140, if only. But she said, but I am sure you will agree with us that it was money well spent, that these preachers are reaching thousands monthly. And so we can see there's a trajectory running right back to the 1930s and reaching to this very day here in which training has been provided to prepare men and women to be involved in mission in Europe. Not all have become full-time missionaries. Not all have become pastors. Not all have gone on to serve with EMF, though many have. Many are serving with other missions or Christian organizations. Some are in pastoral ministry. Others have gone back to their churches, where we hope that they are serving usefully as members of local churches contributing based on what they've learned in their time here in Welling. Only a few hundred people have had the privilege of taking this course, but through them we know that its effects and its benefits are far-reaching, like Ruth Stewart wrote, reaching thousands of people. I'm sure that there are many who would want to echo Ruth Stewart's words as we think about the course on the closing day, we could not keep back the tears from our eyes as brethren one by one expressed in touching language just what the Bible course had meant to them. This has been a fruitful ministry. And so we praise God for all that is past.